On this trip around the county, we take a look at a Noblesville resident who might be our city's next Olympian, and we see what happens behind the scenes of Noblesville High School's musical. All this and more on this trip around the county. Welcome to Around the County. I'm Mackenzie Vitell. And I'm Maya McDonald. On Around the County, we take you to places you may have never been and introduce you to people you may not know. Cinderella, it's not just a children's story. It's also a musical known around the world, one that is seen by millions of people every year. And here in Noblesville, it hit the stage this fall. Producers Lucas Glime and Schaefer Doan take us behind the scenes to find out how large-scale production comes to life. Student theater productions are one of the fastest growing activities in America. However, the people in Noblesville do it at the highest level. But what really goes into the production of a large musical show like this? How do a bunch of teenagers stage a production that rivals a professional theater? Noblesville High School has one of the top theater productions in the state of Indiana. In the past years, they have put together large productions like Chicago and the High School Musical. But this year, they shifted to the famous fairy tale, Cinderella. But how does that happen? How are the amazing sets and props put together? Sean Wood is the student director for the musical this year. She says the ideas for the sets started in, une in an unexpected place, a classroom. So this is um, one of the classes we can take here, theater production. And so I wanted to take it because I liked set building and I wanted to learn more about it. And I had also just become, I was going to be a thespian officer for the second time. And so I wanted to know both sides, being on stage and backstage, just so that overall I was a well-rounded person in theater. Backstage crew needs leaders like Wood. However, Wood isn't alone in running a show. The set construction crew for this year's Cinderella actually consisted of many actors who were in the show. I personally think when you have actors building the set and working backstage as well, they have a better respect for the crew members because that was something that last year we had some members that didn't really show the great amount of respect for crew. And this year I think there's going to be less of that because we have more actors helping backstage and building sets because you're all one team, you're all one musical. And so that's what you gotta do. The crew has to do more than just build sets. Some members work with the show's lighting and sound design. Junior Emerson Phillips is the light manager for the production. She has worked her way up in the ranks to find herself in one of the most important roles in the musical. And so I was put as a stage manager um, for, the, for the play of that year. And then after that, they saw that I could learn really quickly and, you know, I could do my job. Um, and so um, they, know, they knew that they needed someone to replace the seniors after they had left because originally before me there was a senior working here. Um, and they were like, hey, Emerson works really hard and does a really good job. We should like totally put her here. <laughs> but a show like Cinderella isn't always smooth sailing. A backstage crew typically runs into a ton of problems that have to be solved on the fly. In a stage production, things are almost guaranteed to go wrong. And Phillips is one of the best there is at making those quick adjustments. So during the show, there's always things that goes wrong, without a doubt. So, you know, we had to do some quick thinking, and it's always something like that. You always have to think on your feet, um, especially when things go wrong, because it will go wrong. Phillips and the crew around her have many people helping with years of theater experience. One of those veteran conductors is English teacher Greg Richards. In his four decades at NHS, Richards has played a vital role in organizing hundreds of shows. He has seen all the challenges in, organ in organizing a large-scale production. The stage crew it really has a challenge to not crash things into actors who are leaving the stage or actors who are coming on. So uh, synchronizing the set changes, and there are a lot of them, um, maybe 20 set changes at least, I would guess. Producing a show like this is a lot of hard work, but for the people who make it happen, it's all worth it. And just seeing the rewarding, you know, happy people who walk out of a show and are like, oh my god, that was great, you know, being able to put on something so amazing as this is, you know, really rewarding.
The Olympics are something that every young athlete dreams of. Well, in Noblesville, that dream might become a reality for one swimmer. Producers Aaron McMahon and Jordan Kohlmeyer introduce us to a student who is reaching for the highest star. Kids who play sports dream of representing their country. They imagine themselves at the Olympics or breaking records. For local Noblesville resident Luke Whitlock, this dream has become a reality. Um, well, on family vacations, my parents kind of just saw me swimming in hotel pools, and so they just decided me to throw me in that and see how it went. And first season was pretty good, and then I, I decided to stick with it, and it just got better from there. Whitlock's mom, Kara, started to notice her son's love for swimming at a young age. Even though that he started in other sports, the pool was where his heart was. He started in fifth grade and he was doing basketball at the same time and I thought that he would never give up basketball but he kind of turned his interest to swimming and it took off from there. He just, he loved it. His family weren't the only ones who saw Whitlock's ability. Fisher Swim and Dive head coach Joe Keller noticed his potential during his freshman year of swimming. Uh, I saw Luke swim. It was, would have been his freshman year. Well, I was like, man, this kid's not very big, but he's moving a lot of water, and he was pretty efficient. And uh, I told one of my assistants at that time, I said, I think this kid could be really good. And now we've seen something completely different even beyond that. The amount of work that Whitlock puts into his swimming career is heavy and time consuming. As a result, he decided this year to continue his schoolwork online to release some of the pressure. So this year for school for me is a little bit lighter because waking up early at like 5 a.m. every day can be draining. And luckily for me this year, I'm able to take naps in between practices. I don't have as much schoolwork, so that's nice. And that work paid off. Whitlock committed to the University of Florida during the end of his junior year to continue his swim career. Um, so, really just the, the awesome distance program. This is the events that I swim. They just have a storied program. Uh, definitely the best distance program in the country. And I really like the coaches, the people on the team. And just knowing that I can go there and have all those people to push me every day is just awesome. His parents are proud of that decision. They believe that the University of Florida is the place that will help him reach his goal, going to the Olympics. They have a great pro group, so I know that uh, when he graduates will be the next round of Olympics, so that'll be fun. You know, by then he will, um, you know, have put on some muscle and fully grown and things like that. So it'll be, it'll be fun to see how he, he does then. The Olympics has always been a goal for Whitlock. His coach has always believed that the Olympics were meant for him. Yeah, I, that's something that's always kind of been in the back of my mind. Um, and I think it's like that for every swimmer, especially from a young age. Like everybody dreams about that. It's like the top of the sport. You know, the largest majority of people that make the Olympic team are collegiate age and older, and especially on the guy side. Um, if there's more men that are making the team than there are kids. There's a certainly a pathway to get there, but uh, there's still a lot of work to, to do to get there as well. Wars Whitlock have won are impressive. He is the fastest USA 18 and under at a junior international competition for the 800 free, and he has even beaten Olympian Jake Mitchell's previous record when he swam at Carmel. But despite his success, his parents sometimes can't believe that their son is one of the top swimmers in the country. It's amazing. Um, some of the people that you've heard of, people that um, were Olympians the last Olympics, and to see him being, you know, just two lanes over in the top eight at some of these things, um, it's kind of amazing. Keller has enjoyed watching Whitlock grow during their time together. He says Whitlock is not the same swimmer as he was when they started. Being able to see the maturity and the growth that he's making <clears throat> is getting exciting. And um, it's also getting to the point where, um, yeah, we can see some light at the end of the tunnel of what might be possible. Making the Olympics would mean that Whitlock can be a part of something bigger. He will represent not only his team, he will wear the colors of his country. It'll just be a great honor to represent my country, which the Olympics is just like the top, and I, it mean a lot just 
just for like my team here and the people that I train with, my family, my friends, and everyone like that. That's all for this episode of Around the County. I'm Mackenzie Vitale. And I'm Maya McDonald. Join us next time for another trip Around, around the, the County. county.